With Liverpool winning yesterday away at Burnley by two goals to nil, it was Diego Jota off the bench scoring the second one and Doenone scoring the first one in the sixth minute. They are now at 42 points on the top of the table. Arsenal are going to come into this game of football tomorrow knowing that if they win, they'll see themselves really getting themselves to where they deserve to be because they have been table leaders for some time. And here they come in a game of football dubbed as the London Derby versus West Ham, a team that went ahead to beat United by two goals to nil at the London Stadium. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. It's a Wednesday and tomorrow it's when Arsenal are really playing their other beautiful game against West Ham. From a 1-1 draw at Liverpool, a very well fought for point and they're really coming into the situation. They obviously get ready for this other fixture. Smash the like button, comment and share. If I told you watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss that on stories that you do upload in here on a daily. Arsenal fans, I'd like to let you, to let you know that you went ahead to play against Sorry, Aston Villa would have gone ahead to go ahead of you if I told they went ahead to beat Man United yesterday. But the game ended in favor of Man United. At half time, it was 2-0 in favor of Aston Villa. United finished or well accomplished the comeback through Rasmus Hoyland scoring his first Premier League goal, adding it to the breast that Alejandro Ganacho had scored earlier to level the game. So Aston Villa is having 39 points. Right, they're having 39 points, and Arsenal is second, having 40, meaning that Arsenal comes into this game very, very geared up. But, but you should keep this in the know that however much West Ham went ahead to beat United by two goals to nil, they were not the better team on the day. United controlled that game, they had chances, and they failed to kill off those chances. <laughs> That's what I can tell you. They had those chances, and they failed to kill them off. So, all what United should, all what Arsenal should be doing, I know they can create more chances than Man United. They should kill off their chances, and West Ham is not all that a team that can really stop you from doing the job because they are going to come in throughout the Emirates. They are going to park the bus. After parking the bus, they'll hit Arsenal on the break. Remember, they don't have Mikel Antonio, and they play with Gerard Bowen as a false number nine. And in that role, is going to hit to score very many goals. When you look in the Premier League, Gerard Bowen is really scoring goals for fun. Let me check. I really want to be I really want to be very exact when it comes to him. Do you know that Gerard Bowen has 11 goals in the Premier League? He has gone ahead to play 17 games. He has 11 goals and one assist. That is Gerard Bowen for you. So, he is really on fire and Arsenal needs to really get or find a solution for this guy because he's really firing up all cylinders and scoring goals for fun. So, that is it coming in from that hint that I really wanted to really, really get you know about and let's get into the game. Who is out for Arsenal? First and foremost, Kai Havertz is out, not because of an injury, but because when I had to accumulate five yellow cards and he's really out in this fixture. That is Kai Havertz. And you're going to see who is going to come into play to obviously replace him. Is it Jorginho? Is it Trossard? Is it Emily smith -Rowe? We are going to see into the predicted starting 11. Then... Thomas Partey might make a shocking return and we're waiting for uh, uh, Mikel Arteta today in the press conference to let us know exactly what he thinks about this guy or whether he's returning or not. Then the other guy that we should be talking about is none other than um, Fabio Vieira still out, uh, Julian Timber still out, Tomiyasu is also still out. So I think those are the injuries that Arsenal are really facing plus Tomiyasu. So, we wait and see how that pans out. But for West Ham, Mikhail Antonio is still out. Agard is really fighting to get back to his full fitness as a player for West Ham. And if at all he shows up, then the former Arsenal player, Izita, what's his name? You know, his name is really very, very hard to pronounce. And um, is it Van Propos? Something of the name. Eh? Some, the, name is, it's, the name is really hard to pronounce. So... so He's known as, um, what's his name? Dinos Mavrobenos. You know, he might really come into play. Max O'Connor also was not feeling well for the clash. But I think the rest of the players are really a variable. Mohamed Kudus is here to obviously take on Arsenal and really do the needful. Kudus is really on fire. He's also one of those people that you should also keep an eye on because he has also gone ahead to put in a very good shift at that side. So that's it. And... Let's go into the...
predicted starting 11 of Arsenal as they take on this team. But Mohamed Kudus, 15 games, 6 goals and 1 assist. You know, in the UEFA Europa League, he has 3 goals and in the EFL Cup, he has 1 goal, meaning that he has 10 goals in his career at West Ham. Trust me, summer transfer window won't really see him stay at West Ham. I'm telling you this. You'll tell me later. Teams will come in for him. Teams like Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, you know, and a team like Liverpool is obviously going to look for at players like Mohamed Kudus because if they can get 200 million pounds from Mohamed Salah, I think Mohamed Kudus can really come in through and do the job. If at all he's doing it at West Ham, you know, I think he can do a better job at the Anfield. So let's go into the predicted starting 11 and see who is Ateta going to start and who do we expect not to start into this game with some other players injured and others really coming through. But for Thomas Partey, huge update might be given to us today. I really saw a source yesterday that he's back in training, but I just want to hear it from the horse's mouth that he's Mikel Ateta. Now, in goal, it's going to be David Raya. No doubt about that. David Raya, he's really showing that Ateta is making huge progress and he made the right choice to play him into that position. Then the right back, it's going to be Benjamin White, as usual. And um, he's going to find himself in a very good situation because West Ham don't really use that side a lot. You know, they use Paqueta, who plays that side, but the way he inverts into the midfield is really why you see to it that the likes of Gerard Bowen really gets lots and lots of chances, meaning that he might be on a holiday. Then the left back, I know it's going to be Alexandra Zinchenko. Alexandra Zinchenko who is going to be facing Mohamed Kudus. Kudus is really on fire and Zinchenko needs to be in a very right shape and state of mind because if he, if he doesn't, he might really lose his, himself. Right-sided centre-back, it's going to be none other than William Saliba. Left-sided centre-back, Gabriel Magales coming from that game against Liverpool, scoring a goal. What a better way to obviously face West Ham and obviously welcome yourself back from the festive season and christmas um celebration so we wait and see how that's going to pan out but that central defense to me is the best in the league that is the best central defense in the league I like them hate them they are the best then we go to the midfield three <coughs> obviously declan rice in the single pivot you expect him to be there and really play a very huge role then Alongside him, we see Martin Odegaard. He's really getting well. I really told you that. Arsenal has not clicked. But when they click, you are really going to see what a side Arsenal is. Because they're really having fully talented players only in their team. Fully talented. And you know what it means when you're really having fully talented players at your disposal. Now, Kai Havertz is out. Who is coming in for him? Is it Jorginho? I don't think that Mikel Ateta would like to play with... Uh, Jorginho because <laughs> he won't really get the best that he wants from a game like this. I think he's going to play this guy. He's going to drop Leandro Trossard in the midfield. That is it. He's going to play Leandro Trossard in the midfield and I expect a midfield three of Trossard, uh, Rice and Martin Odegaard. Then right forward obviously Bukayo Saka that is it coming in there. He has a very huge job to do on the night. Uh, I think he'll be facing Palmieri. He might really destroy him to pulps. Then left forward, Gabriel Martinelli. No doubt about it. Very wasteful against Liverpool. And this time round, we need to see him really performing at levels that everyone knows him about. Then leading the line, Gabriel Jesus, of course, is going to lead the line for the side of Arsenal. And I think they're going to have to get a good rest. And they're really fired up for this beautiful fixture in there for you. But West Ham has Lucas Paqueta in that midfield. They need to really watch. They need to keep an eye on him a lot. He destroyed Man United, responsible for two assists. And in the previous two games, they're going to have to put out five assists in the Premier League. So you should keep an eye on him. Mohamed Kudus is another one. You know, he really fits into that system because he's a fast player and he shoots with both feet the right feet that one will call his weakest is one of those that are going to score very many goals for him you know if at all we're gonna hate to really watch the goal that's gonna hate to score in the premier league most of i think he has balanced you know like two with the right foot 
sorry, three with the right foot and three with the left foot. That's how deadly he is. And he's also good at really tracking back the energy is really a lot. But one thing that Arsenal have as a Bayern mean, I mean, every game is the intensity. The energy levels never drop. They really put up a very huge fight in there for you. And um, Ward Prowse, you should also really keep a very a very huge eye on Ward Prowse because Ward Prowse is that kind of player who delivers set pieces and they are really deadly when it comes to set pieces. If at all, you really know what they do. They are really deadly when it comes to set pieces and that's exactly what we should really look at and really get to know where this team is really going to stop it or going to continue doing. So Ward Prowse, don't... Ward Prowse sends a message to Arsenal that don't make fouls in Howley. Don't make fouls in Howley in deadly positions. <laughs> that is it. Because he can come in through and really get a hat trick of, of free kicks. He rarely shoots wide. It's either served by the goalkeeper or hits the frame of goal or it's just by a fraction away from really going inside. That is Ward Prowse for you. So. Those are the players that I think are really going to be deadly. And Gerard Bowen, who is going to be player as a force number nine. But um, they're really having Katizuma is a suspect. And I know the more pressure you pile onto that player, the more you really create an avenue that will see you really create damage into that half. Let's go to the head-to-head -head stats and see exactly what they are all about. The head-to-head -head stats are as follows coming in through from Gugu. Arsenal have won 12 of their last 13 Premier League home games against West Ham with expectation being a 2 nil loss on the opening weekend of the 2015-2016 campaign. So Arsenal have won 12, right? So they are really favorites. And after winning three consecutively games against Arsenal between February 2006 and April 2007, West Ham have won just two of their last 30 games against the Gunners. Arsenal have gone ahead to boss this fixture badly. Then, against no side, have West Ham lost more Premier League games than they have against Arsenal, 35, same as against Liverpool. While Arsenal only have more wins in the competition against Everton, 3 beating Charlton 5-0 in 2000. That is it. The last two, Arsenal are unbeaten in their last 12 home London derbies in the Premier League, 8 draws and 4 losses since a 2 nil loss to Chelsea in August 2022-2021. They've kept just one clean sheet in this run, 2 nil versus West Ham in December 2021 with both such matches this season finishing 2-2. Two -two. So, They've gone ahead not to lose a game in the London Derby. And last season, they went ahead to win the London Derby's home and away. You get? Though this season, they've gone ahead to go at Tottenham Hotspur. Sorry, at Emirates with Tottenham, they've drawn 2-2. Two -two. They've drawn 2-2 two -two with Fulham. They've drawn 2-2 two -two with Chelsea. So, looks like luck is not on their side when it comes to London Derby's. But I think this time around, this is a London Derby. That means a lot to them. And they're really clicking up. The chemistry is forming. And they are really ready, obviously, roughly to rumble for this game. Lastly, West Ham have won their final game in just one of the last seven calendar years. Two draws and four losses, winning 4-1 at Watford in 2021. They've lost on the last four occasions. They've finished there with the London Derby since. I think this game at Emirates last season was played as we are left by... Where they what was J I think one match before they played Wolverhampton Wanderers before we headed to the World Cup. This is when this fixture was really played. And West Ham scored a penalty in the starting minutes. I think like six, three minutes of the game. Ben Rama. But Odegaard came in through. I think he had a brace on the night. And who else? Was it Martinelli? Arsenal won it by three goals to one at the Emirates. And Arsenal are really getting in better shape. And they're really doing all what they had to do to see to it that everything really goes on as to plan. So Arsenal <coughs> have everything to do to win this game and it's in their it's in their favor their favorites and west ham are really the underdogs but we've all seen underdogs shocking big teams but with arsenal coming to this fixture knowing that when they win it they are going to go on top of the premier league table they have to obviously put in a little extra energy kill off the game as soon as it starts 
and see West Ham unlock themselves. Because the longer you take without scoring against West Ham, the longer they're obviously going to pack the bus. The, the earlier you unlock them and really score goals, the earlier they'll obviously make it hard, make it easy for you by opening up to really find an equalizer. That is it. But you should also put into concern that Arsenal has been one of those teams that have gone ahead to obviously improve a lot in this period. And my prediction is simple. I'm giving Arsenal a 3-1 win against West Ham at the Emirates. I just feel that win written all over this game and we see to it that they win. So guys, your thoughts on that are welcome in the comment section below. I've gone ahead to let you know about the players to really watch out for in this fixture. You get, I've told you how Arsenal is really going to play a high line and West Ham are going to play a low block. So it will require some little bit of, um, some little bit of brilliancy from Odegaard, Declan Rice, and Trossard to obviously open them up. And I think the suspension of Kai Havertz comes in at a very bad time because in a game like this, you need you need Kai Havertz a lot, especially when it comes to really getting that ball and not losing it and really finding spaces for him to score. Remember, four goals in Premier League games, in all Premier League games, he play for Arsenal, and he's really great. So, I don't know whether Jorginho will be given a go in this game to start, but I don't see him starting. But my prediction is 3-1 in favor of Arsenal. Obviously, Kai Havertz is out because he's really suspended. I sign out for now. See you later. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rokan David remains my name. And we out. The Muslim is Barak Lau Fikum. The Christians recover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That is, this is the first video of the day and more is cooking. I'm out. See you later. Bye-bye for now.